so I'm so excited. I want you to open up your hearts. I want you to open up your spirits and hear what the spirit of God is saying. And so without further ado, why don't you rise up and help me give a very warm ALC welcome to my brother, my friend, my pastor, my confidant, Pastor Wale Taika. Say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow, I feel exactly the same way as you all do this morning. It's such a joy to be here. Um, I count it always as a unique and distinct privilege to have the opportunity to share God's word and just to fellowship with you and to be um, in your distinguished company today. And um, before I go into, let me take a second to say hello and to especially greet my BFF EAE, best friend forever and ever, PT. <laughs> Thank you for all the ongoing and perpetual love, the fellowship, support, giving, your presence, laughter, <laughs> the trips, the outings, the connections, everything. And we're here forever and ever and ever together. Amen. Amen. Now I also want to acknowledge my sister from another mister, Dr. Anna. <laughs> Welcome back. So good to see you again. Love you much. You're welcome. God bless you. I also want to greet my parents, Mama T and Papa T, this morning. And uh, just thank you for being that light for us. Not just to us, really, for so many other people that look up to you. Thank you for that wonderful example. And uh, especially congratulations to Mama T. You know, some know, some may not know. But she's the newly minted international director of the Lions Club International. Yeah. She's, she's kind of a big deal. She's always been a big deal, but now she's even a bigger deal now with this. Congratulations, Mama Tiza. It's a testimony to her faithfulness, her consistency, um, her heart of service. And this is just the crowning achievement. And I greet all the wonderful ministers, all the great people in the house, my friend, music magnate, love you, brother. <laughs> CY, Chief Lani, Sir Isaac, too many people to greet and to say hello to, but I love you all. So great to be here. Please be seated in God's wonderful presence. I also want to bring you Mostly greetings, a little bit of protests from my left ventricle, my wonderful wife. Anytime she's around me, I get more inspiration. But since she's not here, I'll just say her name, Remy. And I feel better already. But she asked me to say hello to you. She's preaching right now at our church. And uh, let me give you the title of her message and kind of take that into where I'm trying to go this morning. She's preaching today on, you haven't seen God's best yet. And I want to tell someone this morning that you haven't seen God's best yet. The wonderful and beautiful thing about God that I love so much is the fact that he always does his best work ahead. So in other words, everything that you have seen thus far about God is good. Maybe it might even be better, but it's not best. You see, as we were coming, well, we are right after the halfway point of 2024. And a few weeks ago, PT was talking to me and he said, what is God saying for the rest of this year? And PT being the wonderful pastor that he is, he knows that you are coming every Sunday like some hungry birds. Feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. And as the pastor, he has to have the worm to give to each one of you. The worm of God's word, that is. And he's like, what is God saying for the rest of 2024? I want us to kick off the rest of this year 
on a wonderful note. And so I got to praying and seeking the face of God for what God is saying to his people for the rest of this year. And the Lord said to me that I want to do something subtle but powerful. God can work in any way that he chooses or pleases. When Jonathan, the friend of David, was with his armor bearer, he said God can save by many or by few. In other words, it's just two of us, but two of us can take on this company of Philistines. And through those two, they wiped out the Philistines that were coming against them. God can do things in an overt way that everyone sees and is dramatic. And we like that. The culture that we come from, we like the dramatic. If you are looking for too much fireworks this morning, you might miss it, but you will not in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But God can also do things not in an overt way, but in a subtle way. And I think what he wants to do for the rest of this year, starting from this morning, is something subtle but powerful. If you are alive, you are in a battle. If you are alive, there's a fight going on somewhere. If you are alive, your body right now might be fighting some viruses, fighting the bacteria. You fight traffic, you fight a bad mood, you fight your children, you fight your spouse. You're in a battle always. But many times what we think the battle is is not what it really is. This morning I want to point you to where the battle really is. I want to point you to where the focus for today and the rest of this year should be. And when this happens, there's going to be a radical transformation. You know, African people were incurably spiritist. Not spiritual always, spiritist. God forbid you go out of here in the parking lot and you see a cat. Especially if it's a black cat. The, you know, the villagers are here again, you know. You know, it's a cat. It might be someone's pet. Just go and maybe trying to find its way home. Or God forbid it's an owl. Ah, it's all over. An owl is a bird. It lays eggs, you know, it's worms, rats, whatever it's. You may not be someone from the village. But we are just incurably spiritists like that. And many times when we think of a battle or a fight, we picture somewhere, you know, someone, you know, in a dark place with some incantations and doing some certain things. And I'm not trying to downplay the place of spiritual warfare or evil. I know it's out there, but that's not the real enemy. That's not the real issue. The real issue this morning, and that's the title of my message, is in your mind. Tell someone next to you, say, get ready for a shift. Get ready for an encounter. Get ready for a change. Get ready for a next level. Because you see, what God wants to do is going to start here. That powerful organ in between your two ears that is surrounded by your skull and all those bones to protect it, that's where it's going to begin. In fact, that's where the heaviest battle is. But because we can't always see it, we discredit it. Because we can't always see it, we take it for granted. But I've come this morning with a loud clarion call to remind you and to tell you that you need to mind your mind. That you need to win the battlefield of the mind. Help me tell someone next to you, say, mind your mind. Tell that you need to win this battle in the mighty name of Jesus. And church, when you win this battle, get ready for the rest of this year to see multiplication. Get ready to see replication of everything good that God is doing and that God has done in the mighty name of Jesus. My first point today, and the most crucial point, is that the greatest battle in a Christian's life is the battle of your mind. It's not a physical battle. It's not the emotional battle. It's the battle of the mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 to 5, many of us might be familiar with this verses of scripture. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, the apostle Paul is saying, yes, you see us in our physical body and we talk, we move, we, we do everything and you can see us. It says, but we don't walk according to the flesh. The apostle Paul is saying that, yes, you can fight a battle with weapons of war. But the truth is that they are one with strategy. The truth is that how you get the victory is not what you can see. 
And always what you can't see controls what you do see. The things in life that we cannot control are way more than the things that we can control. That's why we operate by faith. That's why we trust God. He says, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are what? Mighty through God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments or imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The place of the mind is a place of battle. What I want to do today for the next few minutes, I want to run through how powerful the mind is in the place of battle for a Christian and how that the way you work out physically, you need to be training your mind in that same way. In fact, in a more serious way. I want to run through some examples in scripture of some people who failed because of their mind. We're going to see those who succeeded because of their mind and how that your mind impacts your life way more than you know. I'm telling you after today, you will become very aggressive with what you're thinking about. You will become more intentional with what you think about and how you think. Because this makes all of the difference. And I'll conclude with what exactly we're supposed to do with your mind. Friends, we live in a very dark time. If you look in the world, if you, if you look with the eye of the spirit, maybe you don't even need to look spiritually. And you just need to see just what's going on. You will see a lot of hopelessness. You will see a lot of depression and discouragement. You will see a lot of dissatisfaction. I was hanging out with my family on um, July 4th. I and mean, we're just having different conversations. And one of them was sharing with me the number of people who have died or have been disfigured or have some horrible complication due to them trying to get a, 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 a BBL. Yeah. And when I looked at some of these people, I'm like, you are okay. There's nothing wrong with you. But who convinced you that you have to be in a certain shape and then you die while going to, you know, Colombia or Brazil or Mexico to do, you know, whatever procedure that you're trying to get done. And I'm like, it's just a case of people who are not content. People who are not happy and is in the mind. Culture and whatever the case has convinced you that this is what a nice, sexy person looks like. When I see my daughters too, and it just makes me laugh. Anytime she's trying to take a picture, she's doing her lips like this. I'm like, just smile. Just a regular smile. But everyone takes a picture in a way where you have to fix your mouth in a different way. <laughs> Life is dark. So the mind of a believer has to be sharp. Your mind has to be strong. What determines if you are a victim or a victor is your mind. You have to have the mind of a winner. The mind of a champion. Because the mind is a war zone. I want to say this. That you cannot win in your mind and lose in life. Similarly, you can't lose in your mind and win in life. Everything that I'm saying this morning, by the time we finish and we pray, if your mind is not in alignment with the scriptures, if your mind is not in alignment with what I'm saying, it's just a waste. Our minds need to be strong. Our minds need to be sharp. Our minds need to come alive. A person who is brain dead, who has no mind, or even a mad person that's roaming the streets, they're useless because they have no mind. They're useless. We need our minds to come alive and our minds to be strong. The state of your mind, my next point, affects the state of your life. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, Springs the issues of life. We have to keep our hearts. We have to keep our minds. 
Because every good thing that is coming out is coming out from your mind. I'm telling you that when we have a shift and God is going to do some serious shaking, you won't see the physical shaking, but there's going to be a great mental shaking this morning. And when it's done, it's going to be a new you that would emerge this morning. It's going to be a new you that's going to finish out 2024. It's going to be a new person that's going to take on life. Because you have a new mindset. Because your mind is renewed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, the greatest target of the enemy is your mind. The enemy is not trying to target your car or your house. And those are good things. The greatest target of the enemy it's your mind. Someone this morning listening to me, or someone online, you might have come into this service with a victim mentality. You might have come into this service with feeling that life is against you and you just can't get right and you're losing on every side. You may have come into this service without hope. You might have come into the service thinking that you are down and out. You might have come in with religion in your mind and not a relationship with Christ. But I've come to announce to you this morning that there is a change. That there is a divine reversal. That you're going to come out a champion. You're going to come out a winner. You're going to come out with the right mindset and the right mentality. If you believe that, shout a winning amen this morning. God wants us to be in a place. Where we win in our mind. You see the scripture that we just read. Why it's so crucial and why this is so important. When we think about principalities. When we think about imaginations. It's not a big person that's a principality. Even though some people look like they are principalities. But a principality is a strong train of thought. Or a strong thought pattern that has dominated your whole life and existence. Maybe you come from a background or a family where the best that we can have is a high school degree. So you're not even thinking that there's anything beyond that. That's a principality. That has put a seal or a cup over you just right there and then. A way of looking at God Looking at God as someone that you have to impress or please before he blesses you. Whereas God is already so pleased with you, you can't displease him. How do you see people? It's all in your mind. Do you see people as to be used and abused? Or do you see them as people that you show love to? As those that God has died for. That you should love and enrich. Do you come to church with a mindset that I'm coming to give? Or are you coming to be given to? And there's a place for you to come and to receive God's word. That's true. But how about coming with a mindset to bless someone? To put a smile on someone's face? To come on time and pray before everyone else gets here. That God will move. And that lives will be changed and transformed. Those are principalities. Those are imaginations. I say to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus that you would win. You would have the victory in your mind today. Where the enemy has been attacking you, you will go on the offensive and you will begin to take those thoughts captive. Because friends, the thoughts that you don't take captive can hold you captive. The imagination that you don't cast down, they can cast you down. And God wants us as we press into the last six months of this year to begin to win the battle of the mind. I declare that you will not enter into captivity in the name of Jesus. That you will have the victory. You will have the victory in the name of Jesus. Let's look at the first example. Tragic story of the group of people who failed miserably. In fact, they all died because of their minds. The people of Israel. These people had been in captivity for 430 years. 430. Now, the bad part was not the fact that they were in Egypt for 430 years. The damage that the enemy did is that Egypt got into them. Not only were these people in slavery, they came out of Egypt with a slavery mentality. 
430 years they were in there. The easy part was for God to get them out of Egypt. God sent Moses with a rod. Put out some nice ten plagues. Pharaoh's like, all right, you all got to go. We're tired of this. Not only did they go, all the back pay. They went to their masters, their slave owners. It's time to pay up. And they collected the jewelry, collected the artifacts, collected all kinds of things. They left wonderfully blessed. God gave them supernatural shoes that if you were four years old, the same shoes that you had, by the time you became 30, they grew along with you. What a miraculous God. But look at the mentality of these people. In Numbers chapter 11, if you read verse 4 to 5, this blew my mind. It says the mixed multitude who were among them, they yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? They were already getting manna, mind you, from God. He says, we remember the fish that we ate freely. Was the fish free? Was it not your slave labor that gave you that fish? Now look at the mind of the privilege that they have. In Egypt, the cucumbers, who, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. Who has been to an onion restaurant before? Who wants to eat garlic that will light your mouth on fire? Who is looking for leeks? <laughs> Someone raise their hand. <laughs> Give me some garlic. Who... Who, who longs after these things? If they say we miss the filet mignon and the shrimp and lobster, I may, feel, I may have felt a little bit better about this. But they're longing for onions and the garlic. Onions, I think, is a man's creation. I don't think God made onions, you know. I don't, you know. <laughs> but they're longing for all of these things in slavery, all these things in Egypt. They were on their way to destiny. On their way to the promised land. On their way to Canaan. And because their minds were enslaved, they still wanted to go back to slavery. Friends, I'm telling you that this is the tragedy, unfortunately, that many people are in right now. There's some things you're going through. It's not the devil. There's some things happening to you right now. It's not the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, somebody who hates you or your boss. It's your mind. And that's why what God wants to do this morning and for us to enter the rest of this year is to get our mind right, is to get our thinking right, is to get how we see things right. Because when you begin to win in your mind, you begin to win in life. This is what happened to Israel. This is what the enemy did to them. They're like the circus animal. You know those circus elephants in India or wherever they are? When they train them, they get them when they are young and not as strong. A fully grown elephant weighs over a ton. Can do serious damage. They put a rope around the elephant's leg. And they have the elephant running around like that. At that age, they try to escape, but they can't. But the trainer just knows it's just a matter of time. When the elephant becomes a full-blown elephant, that same rope they tied around the leg of the baby is still there. If the elephant just took a few more steps to the left, it will wreck that whole wall or whatever they tied it to. But guess what? The chains have transferred from the leg to the mind. And so what the elephant can do without even much effort, it still believes it's enslaved. And so it stays there under the rule of the ringmaster of the circus. Because now the mind of the elephant is in chains, not just his feet. That's what the enemy did to Israel. Took those chains from their hands and feet and transferred it to their mind. Do you know that that whole generation, with the exception of Caleb and Joshua, they all died in the wilderness. God said every one of these people with this slave mentality, they can't go into Canaan like this. Only those who were born in the wilderness and Joshua and Caleb went into the promised land. It says about Joshua and Caleb that they had a different spirit. Oh, glory to God. That's another way of saying that they had a different mind. They had a different mentality. When others saw defeat, they said, no, our God is too big. We can't die in this place. 
ALC, you are coming out of this service with a different mind. You are coming out of this service with a different spirit, like Joshua and Caleb, and you will enter into your promised land in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit. They had a different mentality. They had a different mindset. You know what's so funny? Is that when God in Numbers 14, God said to them, this is how destructive a bad mind is. God said to them in Numbers 14, he said to them that because of your disobedience, because of your, your belly aching and your grumbling and your slave mindset, all of you are going to die in this wilderness. All of you are going to perish here, except the kids, except those who were born in the wilderness. Now you would have thought that after God gave that warning, that moving forward, they will behave themselves, that they would arrange themselves better. Do you know right after God said that, uh, Joshua sent the, I'm sorry, Moses sent the 12 spies to go to go spy the promised land. After they got the word that said they would die in the wilderness, you would think that they would begin to have a different mind. But right after that, 10 still came back with a bad report. That this land swallows people. Which land have you seen that eats people? They are like giants. They will look like grasshoppers. But Joshua and Caleb came back and said, no, they are bread for us. He said, we'll eat these people like food because of the God that we serve. May someone begin to have a Joshua and a Caleb mentality. Because you see, the way that you know that you have this mind that God wants us to have is you have courage. You have boldness that doesn't make any sense. My daughter will come back home from school and say, Daddy, I was afraid, but I still spoke up anyway. I'm like, that's fantastic. You only show that you have courage when you're afraid and you do something. So I'm like, keep on doing it scared. Keep doing it afraid. Keep speaking up and advocating for yourself. Caleb said, I might be 80, but I still have the strength of 40. Wish our president had that same power too. He says, I can still take this mountain. I can still do this thing. He had a different spirit. They had a different mind. Friends, we must have a different mind. We must have a different spirit. We must teach our kids to have a different mind and to have a different spirit. And in the name of Jesus, because you have a different spirit and a different mind, you will live another life. You will have a new testimony. You will be like Joshua and Caleb. You will see victory when others see defeat. You will see opportunity when others see trouble in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that every chain that limits your mind, everything that makes you to be less than who you are, everything that keeps you from being aligned fully with the plans and the purposes and the will of God, let it be defeated this morning in the name of Jesus. Let it be suppressed forever in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, the Egyptian that you've seen thus far are not the problems and the issues. It's not the financial limitations. It's the issues in your mind. It's the issues of religion stifling you. It's the issue of your mind not saying that God has made you righteous and accepted and beloved. It's the issues of guilt and condemnation and doubt. It's the issue of a lack of thanksgiving. Friends, one of the greatest and the healthiest emotion that you can have that fixes your mind for free is gratitude. Just wake up and be singing and thanking God like someone that has lost their mind. Just wake up one morning and just begin to worship. Look for something to be thankful about. Thank you for the shade. Thank you for the parking lot. Thank you for the close place to park. Thank, just, just look for anything to thank him for. And see how your mind begins to get healed. See how your mind begins to get blessed. See how your mind begins to come alive when you engage in thanksgiving. Speaking of parking spots, there was a joke of the guy who the doctor told him to stay away from donuts for his health. And he was driving by the Dunkin' Donuts. By the way, Dunkin' Donuts is the way to go, not Krispy Kreme. And this self-respecting donut eater, Dunkin' Donuts is the way to go. Anyway, let me come back to the story. So the doctor says, stay away from Dunkin' Donuts. And then he now prayed. And he said, Lord, if I drive by Dunkin' Donuts and there's a parking spot right close to the entrance... I know that you want me to eat these donuts today and to disobey my doctor. 
So he came back to church to tell the pastor the testimony, or to tell his doctor. The doctor, would you believe that after I prayed that prayer, on my 13th time around the block, the parking spot opened. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> we need <laughs> to get our mind right. We need to get our minds right. Let's look at an example of a guy who like us, every time I see the story of Gideon, I get encouraged. I get encouraged because we look at ourselves like Gideon sometimes. Look at what Gideon felt in Judges chapter 6, verse 14 to 16. This was a guy with the potential to deliver a whole nation. Israel was in trouble. God could have gotten anyone, but he decided to get Gideon. He said, the Lord turned to him and said, who is God speaking to today? Who is God calling a deliverer? Who is God speaking to and said, I'm going to use you to help your family. I'm going to use you to deliver your, 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 your work people out of the bondage out of the bondage that they're in. I'm going to use you in your ministry. I'm going to use you in your school, in your community. He says, go in this might of yours. He already called him a mighty man. He says, and you will save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? That should have been enough right there. But look at Gideon. How many of us sound like this? Let's look at all his excuses and all the issues he was going through. Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. Might be true. I'm the least in my father's house. First of all, it's a weak house and I'm now the least in that weak house. And the Lord said to him again, surely I will be with you and you will defeat the Midianites as one. Gideon was limited by fear. Limited by a major inferiority complex. Limited by doubt. Friends, can I tell you that Gideon had an encounter with God. He asked God, show me a sign. Don't you see, depending on where you are in your walk with God, some of us, God might still show you a sign. Some of us, God will not show you a sign. Like you are too grown to be looking for signs. This sign is Genesis through Revelation. Believe my word and what I've told you. But Gideon at the point where he was, God is like, I will help your faith. I will show you a sign. Just believe the word of the Lord. Gideon was in hiding. He was threshing wheat in a cave. You do that on top of a hill, not inside a cave. How many people this morning listening to me and those online, that life has done you in such a way that you're like Gideon in a cave, but you know I'm not supposed to be here. Something is wrong with this situation. I'm speaking to someone that you know that your destiny is bigger than your predicament. That where you are going to is greater than the circumstances around you now. I've come to tell you this morning, look up. Look onto the hills from whence your help comes from. Believe the God who is telling you, have I not sent you? Believe the one who is saying to you that, lo, I'm with you always until the end of time. Believe the one that said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. The one who says he will walk beside you. The one who says that, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because he will be with you. His rod and his staff comforting you. That's why he says that his goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord. Your God is with you. He's saying you will win enough of the victim mentality, enough of the loser mentality, enough of the not enough mentality. Come into the mentality of abundance. Come into the mentality of a victor. Come into the mentality of a champion. God is saying you will win. You will win. Muhammad Ali said to be a champion, it requires will and skill, but more will than skill. That mentality is a mindset. Begin to see what you want to happen. Begin to project in your mind what you want to see. How many people, maybe you're thinking about buying a BMW car, for example. Almost everywhere you go, you start seeing BMWs all over the place. Isn't that the case? Yeah. It's in your mind. It never fails. If you are in a bit of a jam right now, begin to see solutions. I'm telling you, your mind will begin to think in the direction of that solution. Your mind will begin to receive revelations. 
People will call you to assist your solution thinking. Change your mind. Oh, every limit is broken in the name of Jesus. And Gideon had the worst kind of limitation, self-limitation. Please don't doubt yourself. Please don't doubt who God has called you to be. That's why I said today, subtle but powerful. There's going to be a reversal in your mind that's going to lead to a reversal for the rest of this year. Don't limit yourself. You are bigger and greater than you think you are. It never fails me every time. We're doing reviews at work. And one of my friends who's a director says, it never fails that every time I review my staff's assessment of themselves, they always rank themselves lower than how I rank them. Oh, I'm like, that's not going to be me again. Mm -mm -mm. Put an assessment in front of me. I'm exceptional. Whether I think it or not, that's where I am. <laughs> Self-limitation. We hold ourselves back. You deserve a seat at the table. Mama T, you belong where you are right now. You belong at that table. Don't limit yourself. Get that limit, that restraint out of your mind in, in the name of Jesus. Look at another example of a person who made it with their mind. The story of Joseph. Oh, glory to God. Joseph was in prison, but prison was not in Joseph. How do I know that prison was not in Joseph? Because while he was in prison, he was still interpreting people's dreams. Oh, glory to God. Do you know what that tells me? It means that he believed his own dream. That's why he could keep interpreting the dreams of people who were in prison. Joseph could have had a bad attitude. He could have said, they took me from the pit, took me, you know, uh, uh, into Potiphar's house, now took me into prison. He could have said, go away with your dream. I don't have time for any interpretations. But he was still interpreting people's dreams <laughs> because he could believe in his own dream. Can I encourage someone this morning? Keep on doing the good that you're doing. Keep on sowing seed. The Bible says that in due season you will reap if you don't faint. Keep on being a blessing. Keep on being an encourager. Keep on giving. Keep on serving. Keep on showing up. Keep on trusting God. Keep on holding on to his word. It might look like everything around you is going against what God has said to you. But that vision will speak at its appointed time. It will come to pass what God has declared to you. If you just hold Hold on and don't give up. If you keep on trusting in spite, of, in spite of where you are. Joseph was in prison. But thank God the prison was not in Joseph. Joseph knew the palace is still where I belong. I know what God showed me. I saw those 11 stars bound before me. I know it's going to happen. Wherever you are, whatever God has shown you, it's going to happen. You need to believe it. Judge the problem by the promise that God has given to you. Don't judge the promise by the problem that comes against you. Believe God. Hold on to what God is saying. Genesis 41. Let's look at a few verses in there of the story of Joseph. Let's look at verse 14. It says, Pharaoh brought and sent and called Joseph. And they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. Look at this. It says he shaved. Oh my God. Somebody tell your neighbor for me. Say, get ready. Tell them, don't wait for the future to happen. You happen to the future. Hallelujah. You take initiative. You get ready for that problem and that issue. He knew his day of visitation had come. He says he shaved himself. What did he do? He changed his clothing. He told the jailer, you see that nice robe I came here with? When I was the manager in Potiphar's house, give me that robe again. Today is my day. He knew that Egyptians didn't like people with beards. Obviously, he couldn't shave in prison, so he shaved himself, put on some new clothes, and came to Pharaoh. Verse 15, glory to God. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. Glory to God. But I've heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. You see, this is another sign of a mind. Oh, glory to God. I'm so happy right now because I can see people's minds changing already. Glory to God. I can see God doing something in your mind already. This is a sign that God is visiting your mind is that you begin to see interpretations. He says, I've heard that you can understand a dream to interpret it. 
Let's jump down to, what's the next verse that I gave us? 27. Thank you. And the seven thin and ugly cows which came up, by the way, for those who don't know the dream, there were seven fat cows that came out of the water. Seven thin cows came after them. And the seven skinny cows ate up all the seven fat cows. So Joseph is giving the interpretation. He says that those are seven years. Glory to God. And the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. Joseph is saying that, you know what? This seven fat cows, Egypt is going to experience seven fat years of overabundance. After that, it's going to come seven lean years. Joseph now said, but the lean years are going to be so bad that they would wipe out everything that happened in the seven years of abundance. Take us down to verse 38. He says, and Pharaoh said to his servant, <laughs> can we find such a one as this, as a man in whom the spirit of God, let me backtrack so I can catch you up to where this verse is and what this verse is saying to us. Not only did Joseph give the interpretation and interpretations are good. The interpretation came by his gift, but the solution came by his mind. He didn't just tell Pharaoh, this is what the dream says. Let me tell you what we need to do to fix this dream. That came by his mind hallelujah he had the mind of christ he had a renewed mind he had anointed mind that brings about not just interpretation but solutions someone get ready this morning as the lord begins to transform your mind that not only will you be in a place of interpretation but you begin to profess solutions you begin to give answers you begin to give the way out of that scenario in the name of jesus if you believe that shout a powerful amen this morning it would have been one thing for Joseph to just give the interpretation. Pharaoh would have said, thank you. Somebody give him $10 and send it back to his jail cell. But the interpretation came by Joseph's gift of interpreting dreams. But the solution came by his mind. He said, here's what we need to do next. Let's start getting ready. Start putting storehouses in place. Look for a wise man. That can administer all these things. He was talking about himself. It was a polite way of saying, I doubt you'll find someone like me that can do this thing. He was advertising himself. He was putting forth his resume right there to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is like, oh, what am I looking for again? And in one moment, <laughs> Pharaoh said, you are him. You are the one. Joseph is saying, I am him. Help me tell someone with your full chest this morning, I am him. I'm the one. I have that mind. I liberate. I'm the one. I'm him. I'm she. I'm him. Hallelujah. I am him. I'm him. My mind is a solution bringing mind. My mind is a solution my mind brings answers. I have the mind of Christ. His mind gave the solution. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy on common wisdom for divine solutions in the name of Jesus. On common wisdom for divine solutions in the name of Jesus. You know how you say something and you know this does not come from me this came from God you know how you give an answer and you know that this was not because of my intelligence it was the renewed mind of Christ walking on the inside of me anyone who knows me knows that for some reason technology intimidates me when there's a new software to learn I'm the one that has anxiety and high blood pressure it doesn't come easily for some people it comes naturally our kids these days they don't need explanations Give them a device. They can do all kinds of things. Change passcodes. It blows my mind what they can do. Not, not yours truly. So at a meeting in work, we're getting ready to go for this national presentation in Baltimore. And I give a suggestion that has to do with technology. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one. That's good, Wally. And I was laughing to myself that I know this can't be me. You all know this can't be me. Because I don't do technology. The mind of Christ. A mind that brings about solutions. May that be your portion in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that today you receive 
the right mentality because the right mentality affects your destiny. You need the right mentality to actualize destiny. May that right mindset enter into you today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you come out of a mentality of poverty. May you come out of a mentality of weakness. May you come out of a mentality of, of, of victimhood and come into the place of a victor and a champion and the one that God has called in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come out of a bad relationship. Come out of a bad marriage into a glorious one. Come out of confusion into clarity in the name of Jesus. Tell someone next to say, use your mind and you will fulfill destiny. Oh Lord, as I get ready to wrap up, David, my next example of someone who made it because of his mind. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 46, David confronted this giant called Goliath. The interesting thing about what David said, and this is another sign that God is working on your mind. You have courage and you begin to see things. Friends, when you come out of this service, I beg you in the name of God, when you begin to see things, begin to take steps towards what you are seeing. That's God showing you things. That's God giving you ideas. That's your mind being renewed. That's you being bolder than you would normally be. David, David said to Goliath, I will cut off your head. While he's saying this, the guy only has a slingshot and five stones. He doesn't have a knife in his hand. He must have seen that God would give him a knife or he saw Goliath's knife. What am I trying to say to you this morning? That if you don't see things happen, you will not see things happen. You got to see the things happen before you see them. In the name of Jesus. Someone for the next 30 seconds, just begin to see greatness in your future. Begin to see yourself more powerful. Begin to see yourself healed. Begin to see yourself restored. Begin to see yourself transformed. Begin to see yourself prospered. Let your minds I travel far and begin to see the unimaginable things that God can do for you. The wonderful transformations in your family. The wonderful transformations in your heart and in your mind. God is healing and delivering and setting you up and taking you to a next level right now. Begin to see. Yes, you don't have the knife, but it might be the hand of the giant. And you must have the mind of Christ to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You must have the mind to know that your God is a God who pulls down giant hallelujah all of Israel saw a giant that was too big to confront David saw a target that was too big to miss he saw that I just need to throw my stone at this target it's so big I'm going to hit him one way or another someone begin to receive that mind that sees possibilities that mind that sees answers that mind that sees victory when a battle is in front of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Hallelujah. I see it turn around. I see it turn around. I see everything turning around. Turning around. Turning around for my good. I see everything in LC turning around. Turning around. Turning around for your good. See that turn around. See that victory. Hallelujah. Every Goliath in your mind must collapse in the name of Jesus. We see the last example of Isaac in Genesis 26 1. How there was a famine in the land. And know that if you look around natural sin, there is what is it? Inflation going on, and prices are high. But there's people who are making the most money they've ever made in their lives in the midst of the inflation. Friends, our minds need to change. Isaac saw famine. People are thinking of what to eat. Isaac said, I need to sow. That's the mind of Christ. That's where our minds need to be renewed. Instead of always seeing an opportunity to consume, how about to be a producer? That money you're looking for, you need to sell something or add value and someone can pay you for the value that you're bringing. Our mind needs to change. On Friday, I sat down with two people. I'm like, I need to do something about how I'm thinking. Friend of mine who was a former NBA player. And he has a son coming up in his footsteps. And he sat down with this lady. And the things they were discussing. I'm like, why didn't I think about this? What have I been thinking about? 
And tomorrow you hear of a new superstar. The next one is somewhere in Greenbelt, Maryland as I speak. I'm not talking hypothetically. I'm talking about a real thing that I know. But I'm already thinking about marketing. Here's what we can do. Let's begin to put this in place. Laws have changed in college. College can now pay athletes. They don't need to wait till they become pros. And I'm like, wow. This is how I need to be thinking. This is how the people of God need to be thinking. So what God wants to do, ALC, starting from this first Sunday in the month of July, as we rush to the end of 2024, is our mind is going to change. Our minds are going to be transformed. We're going to see ideas. We're going to see solutions. We're going to see victories. We'll see opportunities to sow when others are thinking of what to eat. We're going to see our families transformed, our children healed and delivered, our marriages restored, re relationships coming back to life, our church, our ministry growing. We're going to see possibilities but our minds have to be transformed and restored in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh Lord have mercy Woo! I have so much to share but I feel like I should just stop here I'm just going to stop here and I'm going to have us pray everyone please rise glory to God See, when you are in a place like this and you feel comfortable, you get very happy in the spirit. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. God was not in the earthquake. God was not in the fire. God was in the still small voice. And we are going to hear that still small voice today. From today to the rest of this year, you are going to begin to win the battle of your mind. In the name of Jesus, every mental limitation is broken. Every self-limitation, every self-doubt. In the name of Jesus. Because you see, when God wants to change your season, He changes your senses. Hallelujah! When God wants to change your season, He changes your senses. Like the prodigal son. The Bible says He came to Himself. Glory to God. And he said, why do I sit here dying? If I go back home as a slave, it's better than being here. But I'll be a slave in my father's house. Someone this morning, you just need to come to your senses. Your mind just needs to get right. And you will see your situation differently. You will see your relationship differently. You will see God's people differently. You will see your pastor differently. You will see your ministry differently. You will see your role differently. But we have to win that battle in our minds. Thank you, Jesus, for change of seasons. Thank you for transformation. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Before I pray, let me just give you a piece of advice or pieces of advice. Number one, if you have people in your life that don't speak good things, don't speak positive things, don't speak helpful, encourage, encouraging things, Give them space, please. Proverbs 13, 20 lets us know that he who walks with the wise will do what? Will be wise. But the company of fools will be what? Destroyed. Give them space, please. Because do you know the people that you hang around? They don't just affect your thoughts. They also affect your emotions. Do you know that? People come into your space and you're like, why am I so angry? They came in angry already. Give them space. They're going to mess with your mind. Their thoughts will become your thoughts. Their emotions will become your emotions. Give them space. Avoid that. Avoid unhealthy sinful habits. Because iniquity always corrupts your mentality. Live it with destructive habits and mindsets. Think on God's word. Why is it so important to think on God's word? Why, why have I been shouting for the past 30 minutes about your mind? Because Ephesians 3.20 says that the Lord is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Do you know that the same way that God answers audible prayers, God answers thoughts too? That's why our minds must be right. That's why we're thinking good thoughts always. Productive thoughts, powerful thoughts. Mm. Who's ready for the rest of July, the rest of 2024, with a new and renewed mind? Lastly, and put up the scripture 
the greatest thing we can do is to engage the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Peter is exceptional. Wisdom. And in my opinion, the greatest manifestation of the Holy Spirit is wisdom. Wisdom is not just knowing things like how Joseph knew the interpretation. Wisdom is application. Wisdom is solution. This is the interpretation. But here's what we need to do next. Someone you're having that next level advantage in the name of Jesus. That next level edge is your portion in the name of Jesus. We're going to engage the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to engage the power of the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 1, 6-7. Glory to God. It says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. In verse 7, I believe. Thank you. But of love, of power, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit gives you a sound mind. Not a weak mind. Not a discouraged mind. Not a depressed mind. A sound mind. Hallelujah. Strong mind. A wise mind. Intelligent mind. Forgiving mind. That can let go of things. Not because they deserve your forgiveness. But you deserve to forgive them for your own peace of mind. Glory to God. A sound mind. Just lift up your hands. Let's pray. Kalebo Shandragade. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Labora Mende Supranegale Hashaya. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I speak over this precious people today that in the name of Jesus, they begin to operate in a sound mind that you have given to us. Lord, the right mentality that is needed to actualize destiny may they begin lord to operate in that right mentality in the name of jesus may you have the right perspective about situations may your judgments be accurate and correct may your decision making improve vastly may the choices that you make be good choices godly choices right choices healthy choices in the name of the lord jesus christ now just begin to thank God for this change. Begin to thank God for this renewal. Begin to appreciate him and give him glory. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And before we celebrate and thank God for what he has done. I want you to go to at least seven people for me. And tell them you will win the battle of your mind. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will win the battle of your mind in the name of Jesus. You will, will ooh, yeah. You will win the battle of your mind. Seven people, hallelujah. Yes. Woo. Thank you, Jesus.